Welcome to the sixth Sunday of worship here at Our Savior Lutheran Church. We thank you for gathering with us and trust that you have downloaded a bulletin so that you can add your voice and your words to our worship as well. We will be following the worship services printed in the bulletin and would invite you to uh, respond with the portions that are highlighted for C for congregation. We begin there with the top of page three on our bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Let us continue with our brief order for confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires desire known, and, and from, from whom no secrets are hidden, hidden. cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold, hold together, together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We turn to our lessons appointed for this Sunday. Our first reading from the New Testament comes from the book of Acts, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. In Athens, Paul faces the challenge of proclaiming the gospel to Greeks who know nothing of either Jewish or Christian tradition. He proclaims that the unknown God whom they worship is the true Lord of heaven and earth who will judge the world with justice through Jesus, whom God has raised from the dead. A reading from Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to exhibit, inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they should live so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he was not far off from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, even as some of our own poets have said, your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought to not think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, 
Now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We share responsively from Psalm 68. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings for faultings with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I called out to God with my mouth and praised the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished, cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. Here ends our sharing of the psalm. Our epistle reading for this day comes from 1 Peter, the third chapter, beginning with the 13th verse. The author of 1 Peter encourages Christians to remain faithful, even in the face of defamation and persecution. In baptism, we are made clean to act in accordance with what is right. A reading from 1 Peter. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah build, during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our holy gospel for this Sunday comes from St. John, the 14th chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. In final words to his disciples in the night of his arrest, Jesus encourages obedience to his commandments and speaks of the Spirit who will be with them forever. A reading now from St. John. <clears throat> Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you an, another an advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. 
They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by me, by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. This time I would invite any of the younger members of your family, your homes, to gather with you. And I would suggest if you don't have uh, jelly beans to share with them, you could always buy a bag and do that, or use score bars. They're pretty good, too. Well, thanks for joining with me. Today I want to spend a couple moments just talking about this thing that Jesus said, especially to the younger members of our congregation as they look at people who are older, gray-haired or bald or uh, that sort of stuff. And Jesus makes a promise and he says that I will be in you and you will be in with me and I will be with you forever. And yeah, that's a long time. Forever is more than a day. It's more than a week. It's more than a month or a decade or a century or even a millennia. Forever is forever. It has no end. What Jesus is saying there is that he loves us so much. And he loves each of you so much that he is going to spend your entire life in this kingdom dying that you might live. And he's going to spend the entireness of eternity with you. That is, he's never going to depart from you. But here's what Jesus really hopes that you grasp in your heart and you hang on to. When things get bad, and they will, like we're going through now, you know, school, it's, it's done. You can't go out and play with your friends. There's no summer ball. Swimming is probably almost out of the question. We seem all alone and, and there's nobody there. But there's this little voice deep, deep, deep inside of you in your spirit that's the breath of God that lives in you that says, I'm here. So in those days when you're bored, when there's nothing to do and mom and dad are tired of listening to you complain about that, might I suggest you do one thing as kids. Just go outside, lay in the grass, look up at the expanse of the sky, watch the clouds go by and how they come and go and break apart and form new, you know, new things that look like animals and stuff. And think about God's promise to be with you forever. And look up there and see God, who's smiling down at you in the warmth of the sun, whose love comes to you each day when your mom and dad wake you up and tell you to get going for the day. And each day that you have in this kingdom is a reminder you're not alone, even though it may seem like it. So spend this next week giving thanks to God for being in you and with you because he loves you. Thanks for coming. Dear fellow believers, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and risen Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Kind of taking off from what I talked about with the younger members of our congregation and those out in the, in the digital lands, uh, where Jesus promises to forever be with you, in, in doing that, he lays the groundwork for something that's really important that kind of slides past us way too often. Uh, he is, here's Jesus as he's getting ready to depart the kingdom and he's trying to infuse into his disciples this thought and understanding, this blessing that promises them that when they remember to be faithful to God, and remember, he's, he's, he's telling them that faithfulness is bound up in loving the neighbor as yourself and loving God first. That in doing that, you find yourself being one with God together. One together is a unity that you don't choose to do. It's not done because of your hands. It's not become, done because of your desire, your will to. It's because, done because God has already taken care of it and merely invites you to step into this unity. We have forgotten, I think, somehow that unity and uniformity and being one with another, they're not the same con concepts. Uniformity means that everybody looks the same, you know, like some of you remember the uniforms that you wore in school. I remember growing up thinking, oh, I'm glad I'm not a girl. Because when it came time for physical education classes, they had those awful, ugly uniforms. Oh, they were hideous. And then we got our white 
shorts and white t-shirts. We looked like inverted q-tips. And when you're a young kid, you know, in seventh grade with straggly skinny legs and arms, we looked hideous. But the uniform made us all look like one, uniformity. And heaven help the guy who forgot his, his shorts and wear blue or something. Mr. Jenkins didn't like that. Uniformity means everything the same. That's not what Jesus is talking about. He's not even talking about a unity that comes because we live in the same country and we have the same families maybe or we eat the same foods or whatever. That, that's, that's, that's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about the type of unity that we choose to build or break apart. He's talking about being one with one another together. That is, unique individuals whom God has created breathed his spirit into and said, live out there in love, doing the things that I've done to you. That's our unity. That when we talk about unity, uh, being one together with God, it's about loving our neighbors as ourselves because we remember that God has first loved us and we've loved him in return. And that sets us free. Our unity uh, in God, being one together with God, isn't our choice. It's a gift that God has given us. That together, we are the gifts of the world. Think about it for a moment. There's one word, present. You can be present the here and now. Or you can have a present under a Christmas tree. Or you can take that same word and you can present yourself to your neighbor as a gift. God says that he has presented his son to you. He has gifted you to him. He is your gift in this moment, in this present. And in him is the fullness of life. And you know him. And in knowing Jesus, you know God. And in knowing God, you know the truth. And the truth is that Jesus is the present that we get every day of our lives. And by the spirit of God which comes to us, that welcomes us into that moment, that present, we get to unwrap and see Jesus new every day. Well, that's only if our neighbors present him to us as a present. Jesus reminds his disciples, or wants to, them to know as he's getting ready to depart this kingdom, of the great love that God has for them. I would invite you to go back to John and start, you know, maybe in the 12th chapter or so, start reading and listening to that word and how Jesus weaves that in there and how that coming togetherness in 14 is all bound around that simple little word of loving, serving, dying for one another. And Jesus says that he has died for all of us. We are being one together when we die for one another and when we live for Christ. And that's what he's pushing them to. Why? So that we might share this with one another. That as God and Jesus are one, we are one with him. And that's the great blessing. The promise of the Spirit to always be with us, one together. Amen. This time we have special music from Gordon Miller. We all one in the Spirit, we all one in the Lord, we all one in the Spirit, we all one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our Christians by our love. 
confess our Christian faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers for this day, we will remember the family of Esther Syme, a member of our congregation, who passed away this past week. Uh, we remember her and her family as members, but also as children and of God who are in need of our prayers. Each of our petitions this day ends with me saying, Lord, in your mercy, to which you can respond here our prayer. If you don't have the bulletin in front of you, uh, that will uh, help you uh, participate a little bit more. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Abiding God, you have revealed yourself to us in the form of your Son, Jesus Christ. Embolden your churches, your followers, to reveal your love to everyone in our speaking and in our living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are the creator of heaven and earth. Revitalize the health of oceans, rivers, lakes, springs, glaciers, and other bodies of water that give life to your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to the oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Your commands are good and merciful. Give us courage to take hold of our baptismal promises to work for justice, advocate for voiceless, the voiceless, and free the oppressed and imprisoned in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You come near to us when we are lost, and you hear our distress. We pray for those who suffer in any way, especially those whom we name in our hearts. Remembering today the family of Esther Syme. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You remain always with us, O God, and your kingdom has no end. We remember the saints who have gone before us. Unite us forever in your final victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we as forgive we those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. At this time, as we prepare to close our worship, I would invite you to hear these words of blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead 
raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, we have special music from Gordon Miller as he closes our worship. Until we gather again and see you on Wednesday evening's worship, I would invite you to live with this. Christ is risen, just as he said. Live in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.